I've pretty much finished all my thrust test and, uh, and prop testing that I wanted to do. But while I had the thrust stand set up, and uh, being a nice day out here, I decided that I'm going to go ahead and start my battery conditioning process and testing process. I'd bought uh, 10 of these Hobby King Graphene 1.3 or 1300 milliamp hour 4S batteries, and I'm going through a conditioning process uh, for them. There's a theory, it's not something I normally do, but there's a theory out there that if you treat the batteries nice and condition them, you get a longer and more consistent life out of them. So, being a scientific experiment that this is testing frames, I don't want any unknown variables if possible. So, every battery is going to get conditioned and treated the same. First of all, down the bottom here, I have a porcelain tile sitting on my bench. This tile was formed in the fiery furnaces of hell so it should be able to withstand a lipo fire if I have one. It's a good idea and if you've got a tile store nearby just go and tell them you want to tile your house in some of these big ass tiles and they'll probably give you one. There's an extra insurance policy each battery gets its own little lipo sleeping bag. I put them in individual bags because if one catches on fire the last thing I want is to lose four of my batteries. And uh, on my charger here, it's a four port charger, each battery that's hooked up is, um, is receiving a balanced charge. It's not parallel charging, it's just a single uh, battery to each port. So they're being charged at 0.7 amps, uh, reading about 0.8 on the top there, but it's set to charge at 0.7 amps and that equates to a half C uh, charge rating for this battery being 1.3 amps. So at uh, half C it's a very gentle charge and on uh, the bottom right corner there we can see uh, the milliamp hours that have gone into the battery, 469 on top, 283 on the bottom, so it tells me a bit of other information as well. But uh, yeah, each battery will get a nice gentle initial charge from its brand new factory state. Out of uh, interest, this is the little flyer that comes with the batteries, and if we have a look on there, it actually states, from Hobby King, never charge at a rate greater than 1C, one times the capacity of the battery in amp hours, which for these would be 1.3 amps. So if you're a person that likes whacking in 5 or 8 amps, uh, or 5 or 8, you know, 3 to 5C uh, charge rates, then you might want to consider that before uh, buying any of these batteries. It's a little bit unusual, I'm not sure if it's true, but that's what it states there anyway. So each battery uh, has been numbered here, these are the first four batteries that have come off the charger. And I'm using a digital thermometer there to monitor their temperature. It's a pretty nice day, it's about 25, 26 degrees Celsius today, about 77 Fahrenheit. And uh, for an internal resistance test, it's important that the temperature of the batteries is the same uh, because temperature of the battery does affect the results. So each battery is sitting here resting at the moment. Once they all get down to a pretty constant, uh, consistent temperature, I'm going to start the internal resistance test. So I've got my chart set up here. I've initially just recorded some factory voltage and initial charge readings. But to do the internal resistance test, uh, I'm going to use the thrust stand as a load uh, and I'm going to dial up about a 1600 millisecond, microsecond, sorry, which is about 1600 ppm throttle input, which is just over half throttle. I expect it will draw about 7.5 amps out of the battery or 130 odd watts of power. And so I'll record the battery voltage before I start the test. I'll run it up to just over half throttle and I'll record the uh, voltage, the sag voltage or the loaded voltage after the initial sag of 10 to 15 seconds. I'll also note or record the current that's drawn at that point and uh, jot it down here in my book. So every battery will get treated the same and uh, we'll, we'll go through the same load test and I'll record the start voltage, the loaded voltage and the current and then using these formulas I'll calculate the internal resistance. So start voltage minus loaded voltage gives me delta voltage or difference in voltage. The difference in voltage divided by the current in amps is my internal resistance. It's not a perfect scientific test but it's so it's not going to give me an ac accurate absolute 
well, it should give me an accurate result, but not an absolute result. And so I'll, it, but it will give a relative accuracy, which means that I'll be able to compare each battery to the other if I do the test the same. From there, I can then decide if there's any batteries that don't meet uh, sort of the median or average result and put them aside. I'll uh, then continue to leave the battery on the thrust stand and run it down to a suitable discharge state using the thrust stand, uh, drawing about that 6C sort of rating or 7.5 amps out of it. And once I've taken it down to a suitable discharge state, it'll come back over here to the charger where I will recharge it with a storage charge, which is about a half charge, and then they'll go back in the cupboard where they'll sit for a few weeks until I'm ready to give them another recharge and flight test. Here's the results from the internal resistance test. I haven't calculated the internal resistance yet, but uh, I've got my starting voltage, my loaded voltage, and the current recorded. I've actually re well, I filmed all of my tests, and luckily I did because the voltage dropped off uh, or continued to drop off uh, pretty quickly, even after 10 seconds and 15 seconds as it was consumed. So. Um, I rec reviewed the footage and stopped it all at the 10 second mark of, of from the prop spin up time and uh, recorded these numbers. So I'll do the calculations and in the meantime you have a look at one of my tests. The calculations are complete. I've used the formulas at the bottom of the page there, and uh, and here's what I've found. Battery number one and ba has the lowest internal resistance at 38.3 milliohms, and battery number four has the highest resistance at 43.6 milliohms. So if, if I remove those two batteries from the sample set and use the remaining eight. I would have a variation of 3.1 ohms uh, internal, sorry, 3.1 milliohms internal resistance difference in the rest of the sample set. So, the high, the lowest would be number 10 at 39.2 milliohms, and the highest would be number 5 at 42.3. So, I'm pretty happy with those results. It did prove that it was a very, very finicky test. If you, if you took the readings at one second later or one second earlier it did vary the result quite a bit so uh, but uh, anyway at least they're all pretty consistent. For comparison's sake I decided to do the same internal resistance test with the same principles on these Dynergy batteries. I had uh, three Dynergy 1300 4S batteries, two are near new, five or ten cycles and one is brand new. And interestingly, the results for them were very, very consistent, all around 60 or just under 60 milliohms internal resistance. But uh, that makes it about 50% higher than the, than the Turnergy graphene batteries. Now I had a consistent process to discharge the batteries. I would apply a 1700 microsecond throttle input, which uh, drew about 10.5 to 11 amps. And I would, you, with that input, run the battery down to about 15 volts. Once it reached 15 volts, I would start throttling back with the uh, input, uh, reducing that microsecond input. You can sort of see it in the top right corner of the laptop screen there. And uh, I'd just keep reducing the input uh, whilst maintaining a 15 volt uh, reading of the battery until I got down to about 1200 microseconds and then I would drop it off altogether and let the battery rest and typically it would just come up maybe to 15.02 volts and the whole process typically took about eight and a half minutes. Once they've rested for a while the batteries are then given their storage charge at one amp The storage charge is now complete for each of my 10 graphene 1300 4S batteries. I've recharged or storage charged them to 15.2 um, volts, which is about 3.8 volts per cell. 
it's only about 0.05 volts above what I, I bled them down to so they didn't take much to get up to storage charge they'll now go back in their fancy packaging and in the cupboard for a week or two until I'm ready to use them for the flight test